Welcome to God's Five Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson. Reach him at God's Five Minutes at gmail.com. Now, here's Ed Wilson with God's Five Minutes. Hello, friends. Mark 1.35 reads, And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place, and there prayed. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. And when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. The Bible teaches us that Jesus Christ was Son of God. He was God incarnate, God in the flesh, having powers and understandings like none before or after have ever done. And yet for all that, he had spiritual needs as demonstrated by the lessons in the scriptures about his prayer life. In this respect, as in all others, he became our perfect example, for we learn from the gospel readers that writers rather that he found prayer to be a necessary daily part of his existence. Before every major decision in his ministry, we find him seeking out a private prayer place from which to complete the powerful connection with his father that characterized him. It wasn't easy. After the day when John baptized him in Jordan and his subsequent seclusion on the Mount of Temptation, he was continually an object of overwhelming public attention, and private opportunities became harder and harder to obtain. This scripture is an example of that fact. Jesus had left his bed of rest while the night was only half over, which was obviously something he planned before lying down. We may suppose he told no one that he meant to slip away in the middle of the night to seek out that holy communion so essential to his spirit. But as every prominent public figure has found, even the night is not safe from intrusions, for while we are sleeping, there are others who are not. And people pressed by the urgencies of need can be forgiven for Pushing past the boundaries of courtesy, Jesus accepted these interruptions graciously and without complaint. So Peter followed Jesus, and not only Peter, but those who were with him. Thus Jesus' solitary place became solitary no longer. For we can picture a caravan of who knows how many, carrying torches, calling out his name as he broke the quiet of his secret prayer. What could our Lord do? Send them away? He would not. Unwelcome in some respects as they must have been for robbing him of this essential part of his ministry. For he ever placed the needs of others above his own. And besides, once his place of solitude was found out, there were sure to be more coming to see him in it. That, after all, was the essence of Peter's message. We have come in looking for you because everyone is. We don't know what to answer them about where you are. The people have pressed us, so we are pressing you. And yet Jesus always worked to find a way to have his alone time with the Father. What did it involve? We see him getting up earlier and earlier, trading more and more hours of needed sleep for even more necessary hours of prayer. We see him sending the boat of disciples across the Sea of Galilee so he could have a lonely mountainside for himself, which led to his stroll across the waves. Finally, we hear him when he could be alone no longer, praying a prayer that must have been overheard alone in the garden. There are lessons here for us. We need prayer too, but there's no substitute. Hours in council sessions, listening to gospel messages, reading good books, any of these may be valuable in themselves, but none of them take the place of the closet into which we entered to shut out the world and talk to God. Did Jesus need that? You and I need it just as surely as he did, and it can seem just as difficult to get. Picture the young mother, up off and on through the night to care for a newborn, but still having to prepare breakfast for a working husband or older children, little hands pulling at her skirts while she tries to do laundry. She must learn to pray while washing dishes. Or the computer expert who receives emergency calls all through the day and night, phone that never stops ringing. Don't we all seem to lead busy lives? Even in the midst, friends, remember how Jesus took time to pray for us and let you and I be diligent to do our part. If we have to get up earlier, if we have to turn our hearts in prayer while our hands are doing other necessary tasks throughout the day, take time to visit with Jesus. You have been listening to God's Five Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson. Reach him by email at G-O-D-S-F-I-V-E minutes at gmail.com. Tune in next time to hear more encouraging thoughts from God's Word on God's 5 Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson.
never miss your favorite show again. For more than 30 years, KNEO has been bringing you great Bible teachers on a local and national level. And now we've made it easier than ever to hear from these great men and women of God. KNEO's entire lineup is now available to listen anytime, anywhere through our website. Go to KNEO.org slash podcast to see all the options. You can search for programs alphabetically, or you can select individual categories like culture, kids, leadership, or music. We even have a category just for locally produced programs, so you can hear from pastors and spiritual leaders located right here in the four-state area. And all these resources are absolutely free. KNEO's mission is to get God's Word in front of you, and this is one of the ways we do it. Give it a try today. Go to KNEO.org and click on the podcast tab to get started.